Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel of Global Solutions. Today, the most important day for all Americans is part two of the ultimate solution to gun violence in America. And these are my analysis and solutions. And today, you will find out how I developed this prevention solution, prevention system that will totally prevent all gun violence in this country and to, that will provide us safety and unity. Um, I will also show you and prove to you that this solution cannot be developed by anyone else. I already showed you my 50 years, combined 50 years of studies of systems of governments around the world. I already showed you this. How many lives are lost annually and at what cost? And you also learn protect and serve. I explained that to you on part one. What I missed on part one is this the ta tactical capability of police officers or when they say protect and serve. If they're not capable of protecting themselves, as I showed you how many cops are killed every year and how many of them uh, commit suicide. If they cannot protect themselves, how can they protect us? Very simple logic. And how much debt each president of the United States are contributing to the future of this country is very bad if this prevention system is not embraced and imp implemented by this government. And I showed you this and how this prevention system must be implemented by the United States government. What I discovered about government's system around the world is this. If uh, there's any type of violence occurs, we are trained to dial 911. The police or first responders arrive. They deal face to face with the suspect or suspects. And these are the possibilities. The suspects will surrender, one, fight or kill himself. If the suspect surrender, he will be tried in court and in prison. In prison, their rights will be protected. Imagine that. In prison, he, will, he or she will be provided with bed, food, exercise, health care, television, access to a lawyer to protect his rights. What about the rights of dead people? What do we have? What do they have? Nothing. Victims and families, some financial support, maybe from governments, nonprofit, neighbors, friends, grief. You get counseling and probably prayers. And most importantly, do not forget, even if your family, family was devastated with uh, death due to gun violence, you still need to keep paying taxes to sustain the prison system and protect the rights of those criminals who are inflicting damages to our community, to your family. This is one reason why America has the highest prison in the world for many years now. So summary, bird's eye view, how the system of police response works. Number one that happens, violence gun violence, mass shootings, terrorism, domestic violence. That's always number one. Then comes the police response. Number three, death comes, imprisonment. And don't be surprised, this is the system of the entire universe. It's just so that I happen to be an American citizen and I am bringing to you all this analysis 
and solutions. Okay, let's start with prison. What is prison? Prison is an isolation system that has existed from the third millennia before Christ, BC. That's how old prison is. It's definitely outdated. And I'm telling you that because I know how to modernize it. Again, this is the system of the entire universe, prison. History of police response, in America at least. In my book, the first police force was uh, in Boston in 1838. Some says it's 1822, but it doesn't matter when. 1822, 1838, it's not a big deal. The problem is here in my analysis. What were modernized from 1822 or 1838? Weapons and ammunition are totally different now from before. Communications, we are highly technological now, advanced, digital, computerized. Number four, transportation is different now. We even have helicopters and we even have uh, drones now. What was never changed or modernized from 1822 or 1838? What was never changed and why? This is the system of the entire universe. What was never changed or modernized? I know that and I know how to modernize it. And it is the police modernization program that I develop, not gun control, the solution to gun violence and prevention and, and terrorism. That's how you prevent it, by updating this. And let me show you why. Modern police system, which I develop, is the conversion of the existing response system. This is what we have around the world in America and the rest of the world, to prevention system. This is how we fix this gun violence and terrorism and all other uh, aspects of our lives or society. A, new, a few major benefits, and I'd like you to read. Prevent all types of violent crimes, gun violence, mass shooting, Unlawful ownership of firearms will totally disappear with this system. Illegal firearms included domestic violence, sexual assaults against children and women, human trafficking against children and women. All of these bad things exist because our law enforcement system or our policing system was never changed. Modern prevention system reduce prison population with the ultimate goal of eliminating prison facilities. Reduce traffic congestion between 60 to 80 percent the first two years, starting whenever the government wants it. Or whenever President Biden says, let's start it today, I'm ready since 2004. Prevent car thefts. Approximately, there are at least 800,000 annually by 60 to 80 percent the first five years. Our policing, police system is not capable of doing this. They can only try to find your car and try to put uh, the thief, thefts, thieves in, in prison. Improves vision zero by 60 to 80 percent again the first two years and that's my commitment protect police officers from killed while in the line of duty and suicide that's included home invasion will be prevented Rob robberies all that now modern police and isolation system we modernize the police we modernize the isolation system which is prison Look at the system that I have. First, isolation, isolation system first. 
Second, police prevention. All types of violent crimes are prevented. No more prison facilities. Here's one thing about the difference between the United States and let's say Philippines where I came from. Philippines, by adopting this, can eliminate their prison facilities within a span of two short years. America will take me about probably 20 years because of politics. Politics is so heavy here in America. So, look at this. Isolation comes first and then the police prevention. And look at what we have now. Violence comes first, police response, and imprisonment. Or this is isolation. We isolate uh, bad people from our society. And this is the third. Here, before you can commit crime, you are, isolation. You are isolated from the society. We are not going to put them behind bars. No. I will provide, my system will provide them the, the uh, education, the job training, and the jobs. That is what isolation system means. You cannot be sitting in <coughs> on street corners, <coughs> excuse me, begging for money. You cannot be doing, uh, selling drugs or dealing drugs on the street. And that's part of isolation system. Now, this is what we have now. This is what I have. Now, this is applicable. This system is applicable to 195 countries around the world. I will only give you Australia as an example. Traffic congestion is included. Homelessness is growing, it's included. Domestic violence of Australia is included. United Kingdom traffic jams. Prison is going up. Knife crime crisis. They cannot remove that. They cannot eliminate, eliminate knife crime. Not uh, include like, like the United States of America's gun violence. The same system. Again, 50 years. How I developed this modern system. And I'll tell you my entire system, my entire story. I studied and I, I studying and analyzing the challenges facing humanity. Government systems became my passion in my entire life. Studying insurgency in the Philippines means looking at the strengths and weaknesses of both the insurgents versus the military. And what I discovered is that the government systems are outdated. And fortunately, I was able to develop advanced systems or modern government system to change the world. This is the, the best way to change the world. I came to the conclusion that the Philippine government will never succeed in defeating insurgency because it's a standard procedure of government, outdated. So I came to the United States in, the, in 1983. By year 1990, I started writing letters to government leaders regarding violence and rising prison population. 1990 is now 2022. That's 32 years of sending letters. I've been sending letters even last, as uh, late as last week, and nobody seems to listen. Then came September 11, 2001. I have a problem. That day, I was going to play golf at the local uh, golf club, not far from my house. And I was sitting in front of TV because I have, I have plenty of time. And I said, I'll kill time and I'll watch some TV and then I go, I'll go to the golf course. And momentarily, I went to the restroom. I came back and 
wo and behold my i was watching uh, color something in color and i came back and it's black and white and there was a building it looks like it was struck by a an object because it was uh, starting to have fire and at the same time there was another it looks like an airplane was going to hit the other building and it took me a while to figure what is this is this cartoon that I'm watching is this advertisement but it's black and white and then it dawned on me as people were started talking I realized that where's an attack this is the terrorism in New York and I was going to play golf so I called my wife and I told her listen if work says go home and 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 they share your news I said do not panic first of all do not panic if you cannot come home let me know call me on my cell phone I'll go pick you up I'm playing golf but my phone will be on all the time thank god nothing happened so here's the problem i have a problem with september 11 i cannot match my knowledge of violent crimes with this terror of new york normally it's so easy for me to put one and one together and match them but with september 11 I cannot figure out what I am missing and this missing gap with me stayed with me until one day on April 4, 2004. Look at that, September 11, 2001 to April 4, 2004 before I was able to match two together. I found the missing link on April 4. 2004 we went out with the, the do some groceries it's Sunday and came back but before I came back I picked up a DVD of the movie Black Hawk Down it's the battle of Mogadishu which happened on October 3 and 4 1993 see um, it's now it is then 2004 and I got this movie I pop it into my DVD uh, player and started watching it. It's the same television, same living room where I witnessed September 11 happen on television. And while I was watching it, I have so many questions with the way they handled, the U.S. Rangers handled the uh, the uh, mission that day is supposedly to be a one, two hour mission and come back, pick up some people and come back to the base, which is at the local airport. Instead, it became a two days uh, killings and, shooting, and shootings where uh, 18 of our US Rangers were killed. But here's the problem. All the while, I was, say, I was asking myself, why did they do that? Why didn't they do this? Why did they, why did they that do? Did they did not did they not do this? This is wrong. This is right. Everything was wrong, and I will share you my analysis. April four, I found the answer, and this is what I have developed. This is what the U.S. Rangers and the entire U.S. military until today is missing that's that's 1993 i'm glad that then president clinton pulled out from somalia otherwise a lot more of our soldiers will be dying there let me show you step one the proper steps step one isolate the unarmed civilians men women and children away from aids group they didn't do that. They have no capability of doing that. Number two, step two, take the walls of the buildings. Look at this. Protecting IDIDS groups 
out of the equation without destroying any buildings or facilities. The military is not capable of this. Number three, reposition the U.S. Rangers in a defensive and offensive position. Imagine that, defensive and offensive position while eliminating Aidid's group's defensive position. Very unique. Again, our military is not capable of this. That's why 18 of them were killed and hundreds or thousands of civilians and Aidid's groups were killed in that, on that October 3 and 4, 1993. That is also why America lost in Afghanistan because of this. Step four, use Aidid's group's defensive position. Look at this. Use, in, in Rangers use their defensive position in favor of the U.S. Rangers. Imagine that. How can I know that? Step five, last step, keep the U.S. Task Force Rangers, Black Hawks, those are helicopters. Uh, I think they're called UH-60 and other helicopters out of Aidid's shooting range because they were using RPGs, which is short for rocket propelled grenade, and still deliver the Rangers a few feet from the enemies. That's why my program comes with a unique, uh, unique uh, guarantees that no one can develop this. No one. It's impossible. And to remind you, President Clinton pulled out of Somalia, or same as, uh, uh, what's his name, President Trump. And now, on the behest, on, on recommendation of uh, Defense Secretary uh, Austin, uh, President Biden is going to, to send several hundreds again back to Somalia. Unbelievable. And they don't have this. All these steps can be done within two hours without casualty among civilians, U.S. Rangers, and no Black Hawk will be hit. And I call this Remo military strategies. The military, U.S. military, or any military in the world do not have this. So I have adapted these five steps into a template for use by the United States and friendly allies. I have designed it, these five steps. One, to prevent all types of violent crimes including terrorism. Look at New York. They, have, they still have terrorism. Eliminate counter-terrorism. This is very wrong. And we still have this to this day. Reduce the cost of fighting violent crimes and terrorism. We're always, we always say we're fighting crimes, but we end up uh, sending people in prison while our families, members, our fa uh, American families are dying in schools, in communities. Our police officers are dying and committing suicide. That's not fighting domestic, that, that's not fighting crimes. We are giving criminals the, the go ahead signal and say, go ahead, uh, commit crimes and we will find you and incarcerate you. That's wrong. Eliminate budget cuts at all government levels. Keep America safe from violence or terrorism. Upgrade, this is very important. Upgrade the standard of U.S. national security to the highest level. What kind of na na U.S. national security do we have when we can't even figure out violence on our street? What kind of uh, FBI do we have that's saying that their objective is to prevent uh, violence or terrorism. They, they can't. They cannot do that. They're not capable of doing that. 
improve the economy to increase the standard of living for the American people and accomplish all this without the need to raise taxes because that's what our government is, keeps on doing. Raise taxes to, to fix this, raise taxes to fix that, raise taxes to fix homelessness, but the homelessness is growing. Give more money to the police, but that's not the problem. Money is not the problem. The system is the problem. And that's why I came up with these guarantees. In this part two, you learned how I, that this is a very powerful book. I'm not asking you to buy the book. I already uh, pro provided you the, the contents of the book. When why no one else can develop this gun violence prevention and police modernization program. How I showed you, and it took me 50 years of studying and how I develop it. Why and how it affects the U.S. military capabilities. What I'm missing is why the U.S. military lost in Afghanistan in Somalia. Well, that's already Somalia. I covered uh, a battle of Mogadishu. But I will think about doing a presentation of Afghanistan so that the people or the American people and the rest of the world will know that there is no way that we can send military in Afghanistan and defeat the Taliban. There is no way. But there's another way. And I will try to think if I should, uh, should share it publicly on YouTube. And the problems of the United States is death. Right now what, we are 30, point, 30 trillion. It's about 115 to 124 percent of the GDP last December. And if the government refuses to embrace my violence prevention that I have developed by 2050, America will have this. And, and, and this is your, your future. And by that time, I'll be gone because I'm now in my 70s. I don't think I, will, I can live another, another 30 years and be able to do a lot of things. And I was not expecting this, but the CEO of the National Association of Manufacturers wrote a letter to Congress that the national, the, our manufacturers, American manufacturers are being outcompeted right now by the rest of the world especially China. And knowing that President Biden says he would like to defeat China, there's no way. Without my programs, this is the future. China will be here and he will be uh, around the world, the leader of the world, and America will be far smaller because with 195% debt of the, to the GDP, there's no way. So this is 2050, there's China, there's America. So if you're watching this, you need to move, you need to act, you need to support me in order for me to be able to support all Americans. I also would like you to look at this presentation I did on the National Association of Manufacturers. And thank you, that concludes my presentation of part two. And I hope you will uh, at least share with this knowledge with other people, number one. Um, let's work together on this. I'm not going to be here forever. And this is the only way. If you have any other way, then let me know. Otherwise, this is it. Thank you very much. Uh, subscribe. At least subscribe. And uh, let me know uh, that you care about America, like this immigrant cares deeply about this country. Thank you very much. Goodbye for now.